the Story of a Song podcast, episode 12. When we left the last, Anthony and Cariati were deep into the mix. Is there a 12 string playing right there? Uh, yeah. I feel like there's some spots where it's not really adding. There's some spots where it adds and other spots where it's just it's just creating noise. You know, it's kind of just got to go through it together. Sometimes I like it, other times it's just like, what is this? Everything's bothering you. Oh, jerk. Who's that jerk? Annoying jerk. <laughs> it's like one extra two lines. It's one ex one melodic line too many. You know, it's like it should be the banjo or the head. Both of them together is too much. And the tuning's bothering me as well. It's just not adding anything pleasant. There are some spots where it does add something pleasant, but not there. It's just it's like all it adds is confusion. It's funny all of a sudden you hear the vocal better. That's true, yeah. Just too many lines, so much jangle. Um, um, they're all great parts, but when they're all together. Yet I like the best vocals for the most part. For the most part. What, what is what is kind of the 12 string is actually from like the original jam with Jeff with like a lot of parts because oh, yeah. like the, the original jam I came up from is like they're both bearing but they're playing a ton of notes and the the sample I had in Ableton I made of them just didn't work in the song so I went back and had Bronson re and that was one of the parts yeah. that was just kind of a, a leftover so it kind of shows in the songwriting process just putting parts in because they were there but like where it leads a song to it might you know it might it doesn't, not, yeah it doesn't yeah. matter yeah interesting that's interesting yeah so and I, what yeah. it, it, and so let's talk about your philosophy of why you wanted to cut it like that's basically what you, I mean I just it was confusing something for me because it's like I, when I hear that the banjo and then the vocal like those melodies all together, it's not helping me focus on the message. You know, say anything that kind of takes me away from the message, which is, you know, front and center is the, the story. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Without doubt. And, and I thought the banjo was really sort of really shadowing the story in a nice way. And then this guy comes in and it's sort of like almost like making it hard to decide what to listen to. No, no, it, it, it's yeah. a great because it's hard, it's hard to cut the tracks that you did, yeah. and it's 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 not a question of being. And there's no right or wrong too. I mean, it's, it's sometimes it's exactly. just how it, you know, emotionally makes you feel. Like there's no there's nothing technically wrong with it. There's mm -hmm. nothing musically wrong with it. You can't say that oh the thirteenth and the eleventh and the second string is making you know it's yeah, just, right. it doesn't. And in <laughs> in your comments, like it's funny here. You know, knowing you, it's like. In your mind, you're just like, we're just losing it. It's just your way of going through your thing. I'm like, yeah. and this bothers me about it. This bothers me. I mean. Sounds a little like Mick Jagger on that line. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, like a young, yeah. young Jagger. When you eat karaoke, I'll um, edit percussion over there. That Allman Brothers vibe is so nailed perfectly. I'm sorry, what? The Almond Brothers vibe is so nailed perfectly, it literally gives me like a feeling like I'm on the 8th grade uh, school bus, <laughs> cool. listening to yeah, Rambling yeah, 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 yeah. It's the sound and the harmony. Right. It's, right. like, it's truly amazing. It's authentic. There's a 9 on the E minor, right? I say again. There's like a 9 on the A minor. Just for the orchestration. I think that's an F, F no? Okay. Yeah, F. A minor, F, A minor, F, and then A minor, C. That Jagger line. <laughs> Sounds exactly like him. Cool. <laughs> this is getting close, I think, probably to the end of your second day a third day of working on this. I think it might be day two. So just mm -hmm. for time sake of how things are yep. working out, like I think in terms of like your normal process, you're right on schedule, 
like some things come up where it's like it really shows like why you really like want to have some extra time because yep. there's some stuff that comes up that's really great um in terms of the vocal treatment um coming up there's another thing of you tuning it karyati that's a little bit more in detailed I'm oh just okay, talking cool. talking a little bit about some of the tools but um what because you're working on the vocals here what you mentioned it last time what what program do you use for auto tune and what is usually your approach for oh that? a program uh i use auto tune mm -hmm. Antares. Antares graphic mode because I don't really like the you know the robot effect. I know it, it's you know well for certain music. Certain, yeah, certain yeah. music is cool. I still don't like it, but um, uh, yeah, yeah, the 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 graphic is just uh, because with the graphic mode you can manipulate it in a way that uh, it will still sound like a natural uh, slide in and out of notes that kind of thing. Uh, but there's also a way to use the graphic mode in like a quote-unquote perfect pop treatment <laughs> which is like you actually ju you go you go to the note perfectly and then um, it slides in a perfect way and then it goes to the note perfectly that's another technique too sometimes we do that wow. um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to look at that it in depends <laughs> it, de it depends depends on the material like this one it wouldn't be appropriate no, because no. you don't want it to sound you know you don't want it to sound like uh who is it out there um, oh i know whoever, like like yeah. we did it we did it in another song when there was joking yeah. and, 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 and like it sometimes oh, but that's more like the folk order robot yeah, yeah, effect yeah, yeah, that yeah, was yeah. pretty cool actually. that's pretty cool yeah. and usually like for that it's like using right. a combination of different plugins right. besides auto-tune right. you know right. like right. that's the key to that it's usually or like, your pedal or oh, the pedal. Yeah, the yeah pedal. I think that right. was the pedal. Oh, Probably no, no, was. no, no. Reverse evolution was auto tune because I have it. Oh, that was auto tune. Um, okay. Electric, electric. Th that that pedal is like you just use it. You hope you get something, and then you <laughs> say it. it, it I did the sound though. It, but it, but really it's like cool. I'll, I'll do different takes, and it's never the same. I could never use that live because it it half the time doesn't work. It doesn't <laughs> like, but it's great when it does. Such an art. I mean, I've been watching him do it for 20 years, and it's like I, I can't do it. It's like it, it's because it's like you can't listen like you can't listen like the human voice is an instrument because it, there's so many things that are imperfect about the human voice that create emotion that the minute you th start thinking of it as like some kind of instrument, that's when you start sucking life out of it. And I think a lot of times people treat the voice too much like a guitar or something. Yeah. Or too too much too much like a keyboard. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because oh. like ev even guitar can go out and yeah. it's still oh, cool. Oh, I, I mean, I, the more and more I play guitar, the more and more I hear parts I like. I'm like, he's so horribly. That's why you <laughs> like it. We did a part that Anthony loved, and you made us re-record <laughs> Reverse Evolution. <laughs> Anthony's like, that's the greatest thing. You're like, you have to re-record it. <laughs> but no, I, I, that completely makes sense because it it. Because vocals aren't that. Because some of the best vocalists have the weirdest. Well, look like, at history. Like if you listen to Robert Plant, like or some some of the great singers we grew up with. If you were to put them on a grid, it would be like. I mean, I think people have even done it to demonstrate how bad it is. Right. And it's like the imperfections are the magic. The imperfections are the personality. And mm -hmm. it's hard for us to to hear like you know. Like, you know, I'm not against auto tune. I think a lot I, of people use it in a creative way. I'm not going to mention the song, but there's a pop song by someone I like, and the background vocals literally sound like what you sang because they're so out of tune. It's not, not, not auto tuned. Yeah. It sounds like someone's hitting them on a keyboard. Right. Like that Yes yeah. song, you know, from, right. from back yeah, in yeah, the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and it's just like. That's an effect, but yeah. But, it, but mm -hmm. it's not supposed to be in the song. And the Yes song, it's supposed to be in right. the back. <laughs> this song, it's like, it sounds like someone hit it on a keyboard right. instead. Of, and, and I know the person sang it. Yeah. yeah. It's a weird Perf thing. Personal yeah, preference. Yeah, but hey, personal it's a, preference. It's I don't weird. want to sound like the old guy, get off my lawn and sing naturally. But yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Because there's nothing wrong. I mean, I, I hear a lot of really creative. Yeah, I, yeah. I think it will, like, yeah, yeah. There, there's a whole bunch of things. And, and so many. No, like, what I like, uh, <laughs> I mean, I laugh at it is that. <laughs> Uh, you know, like nowadays, uh, you hear what I say, the quote unquote perfect pop sound mm -hmm. to a lot of people and to a lot of producers that actually think that's actually that that's like uh, that's a natural sound. 
Oh, we ran into a kid came uh, into our studio. Well, no, I mean, no, no. They actually say that that's a natu- like that's the most natural auto tune or melodyne sound. It's not. Yeah, um, I see what you're saying. Oh, uh, but that's uh, that's what I'm saying about the the perfect pop yes. because like mm-hmm. it slides perfectly. It yeah. goes to the note perfectly. It holds the note perfectly, and then it goes to vibrato at the exact same moment that you want. Um, maybe time, like yeah. a, like an eighth, you know, like an eighth note value. Blah blah blah. But yeah, it doesn't make the robot sound. Yeah. But it makes the singer sounds like a ro- you know, like like like, like AI, you mm-hmm. know, like sure. AI per- yeah. I mean, perfection. I mean, like I, you know. I hate to say it, but like this is more with Anthony. Like when he doesn't like he's played me stuff in the past where he hasn't played drums. It's been someone else, and yeah. it's been be quantized, and he like asked me the song, and I'm like, "Do you play drums on?" He's like, "No." It's like I can, and like, and it's and it's like everyone else might think it sounds right, but for me, it's like it's not the way like a drummer yeah. should sound and yeah, it's like yeah. i think everybody thinks that is perfection and it's like it doesn't sound like sure each drummer has buddy, a per- you know. yeah, like every every the the one name drummers buddy rich you know um vinnie cayuda tony like all the one name drums they all have a different feel that's why they are that's why it's magic are. you yeah. hear steve mm-hmm. gadd on ricky lee jones or yes. paul simon or it's like it's uh, just so yeah and what's ridiculous. his name what's his name from john mellencamp um kenny yeah um, i, I mean, don't he, know yeah, yeah. He's, yeah he just every one of his songs is like holy you, crap you get his feel right yeah. away yeah yeah it's it's a different art you know but but being able to paint those textures and, and maintain the personality of the singer and bring out the personality of the singer without robbing it from it. It's a really art to do it yeah. the way Cariati does it. Well, and, and coming up there... It's not widely acceptable. Because <laughs> <No. laughs> sometimes they say, uh, no, no, it needs to be more... Uh, more uh, perfect. perfect. What a shame. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, 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 and that's, like, like that, that's kind of like in the last per- per- podcast. Like, to be honest, I... I don't I want to do stuff a certain way that that like yeah. sure that's great for one person but I don't need to do that and like times will always re- like evolve so if you like the what's popular today will be pop not popular tomorrow then will be popular so you just got to do what you like doing. well with autotune it's, there's a f- couple of funny points about it like when I first heard it um, it was on that share song Ju- I, I, do believe. you believe yeah do you okay. believe in love that's yeah. like a real super fast yeah um, that was an Antares rack mounted unit and I was working with Sean Mullins at the time with Peter Collins and Peter Collins came in with a, an advanced cassette of that track it wasn't even out yet and he walks in he's, and he puts it in he says you guys got to hear this effect he's like this is going to revolutionize, revolutionize pop music you know and, and like we listen to it and we're like really? he's like, <laughs> he's like we've got to implement it on the track and we're like oh my god so we had to rent that <laughs> that unit <laughs> that and, you know, and we, and we cool. did it and like I, I was thinking this is never gonna catch and what, on what, and it's like <laughs> what, do you remember what track that name is what track it was you did it on uh, it, um, this it was the Sean Mullen song Shimmer and it's only on a few lines but you can hear it it's like as an effect on just a few lines like wow. we, we used it to an effect but then a few years later maybe about I don't know how many years later, but there was a, a spoof on YouTube called Auto Tune the News yeah, that came yeah, out. Yeah. And when that first came out, we would roar laughing because it was just hysterical how they used it. Yeah. But when you listen to Auto Tune the News now, it's not a joke anymore. It's 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 it's, it's what normal is. <laughs> it's normal. That's true. Oh. And yeah, I mean, I mean, exactly. I mean, there's a lot of it. Yeah, it's just it's it, crazy. And yeah. and part of the Auto Tune thing I hear is like I hear a vocoder. As much as auto, like a lot yeah, of the things, sure, it's they, like they overlap. It, there's just mm-hmm. weird effects that, like, that's not really. And the key with auto tune, if you don't know, is if you actually sing good, it's not going to work. So you have to like, yeah. Like, <laughs> to get, <laughs> I like some of the modern pop um, uses of auto tune when they, they 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 chop up the vocals, the background vocals, and they make them sound like porpoises oh, and stuff. Yeah. I, like I I love all that. I like the you know, it's, we, it's, we it's use art. reverse evolution. You know, I, I sometimes just throw it onto a yeah. track yeah. just to see how it sounds. Effect and that got left on and yeah. carried halfway through the thing. Cariotti's using it and I'm like, mm-hmm. you do that. that He's like, no, joke. you did that. You know, so it's like, be careful what no, you do. And I, I like out. I like a lot of yeah. that stuff. I think it's super artistic. There's like ways to do it. <laughs> percussion from the night before. That's 
really and that sweet. swing yeah. is so good. That sounds like me too. Oh, he does. He has. That one sounds like somebody brushing their teeth. I'm not going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> Shaker's no good. Perfect timing. Just finished. <laughs> that squeak you hear is their door. So like a lot of it's loose. Some of it swings a specific swing that I wanted. If you if you ever feel like it's too tight, just drag it to the left. It'll be live. Cool, cool, cool. You know I didn't consolidate. Well, I'm sure it's great. Yeah. So I got I got some interesting oh. like stuff like I like this. <laughs> Pants. I don't like them too far out, but let's keep this going and then bring it in here. I think that's probably better. This feels too clever to me. I'd have to see. It's not quite strong enough. Bad. It's sloppy, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of nice bringing the swing in the second course. You don't necessarily have to do these. Okay. What I had under here, which I, I can easily put back, just I, I, I was wondering if it was just too much, but I was I did like a sixteenth note triplets just so you can hear it. Why not, right? There. Yeah, this sounded really cool down here. That big wet one, that big, I love that. Maybe too. It just, just feels really good. <sighs> yeah. I'm not sure where to place it, but... One... Uh, slightly left, maybe. I love that symbol. Yeah. Nice. So that's like the motor. Save it till this little break. It's, it's brand new from there on. So there's some options. We could always leave all this out and just start it on the second verse. That's another option. But this sounded kind of cool. Maybe start right uh, right here. The chorus like right away, but n none of that. Just like a steady uh, two and four. Yeah, like kind of like this. Um, yeah. <laughs> Try just and then do the random starting from where you have okay, it. Okay, let's try that. That one again. Sure. Yeah. The first yeah. one in each group is a little yeah. And then the... It's so different. It's subtle. It, and it is... And it's not subtle. It's sure. like so much, but it is so subtle. Too. I put it on its own track so you could do something. I love it, the bass. Yeah. The review of that percussion is just amazing when you you heard all the tracks, like which which was a lot of recording, and then you find the little ones yeah. that work so well. I mean, like it's just butter in that just every but I think um um when you when you go to review your percussion it's all is it all it's all gut right of which one works you know it's yeah i mean like when you're doing the but the takes you you kind of don't really know you're just kind of just feeling it and not analyzing it and, and sometimes if i can actually hear myself starting to think and that's when i know that it's not good you can when you can hear yourself thinking on the track you're like okay that's like me trying to decide whether it should swing this much or that much <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like and then you find like a section and you go okay that's cool let's let, like so let's for this let's build that this, the super swingy thing works there mm -hmm. that's know. cool that's yeah cool. it's kind of it's, it's trial and error really i mean you know and, and patience you and know do you find i do you find that like it's good to give yourself like do it the night and then go the next day like yeah to, to, so, so you can clear ideally ideally because like it, the way it hits you like 
uh, with fresh ears is always a little bit different. You know, like you might think at two in the morning, you might think you're like incredible. And then like the next morning at noon, you're like, wow, did that suck? Or <laughs> vice versa. Yeah, like yeah. what? Like uh, yeah, it can I, go I, either way. I usually yeah. have the opposite of like, that's yeah. why I like to give it at least, you know, eight yeah. hours. Because what I usually think is good on something. It's funny how wrong you can be like yes. you know, even four hours later. It's weird. It's like, I mean, your, your gut instincts are definitely worth going on because you know but every every now and then your gut instinct is just not really i would right. say like half the baselines you guys work for me are like when i'm warming up not the parts <laughs> that like and then, and then and then cariati makes it so it's like never what like that's why i always record because it's Man. like what i never think i would work like just works, but back you know? to the i'm sorry to get off the, on that steely dan thing again but i'm kind of obsessed with that gary katz interview he tells the story about gad steve gad coming in for on asia oh, you okay. know that's you know that track asia mm-hmm. By Steely Dan, it's like a legendary, legendary drum track. Okay, so they're talking about it and they're sitting in the control room and he's making notes like for the different like things. And he's like, "Let me just take it once to make some markings on my my chart." He goes out there, they hit record, and what you hear on the album was his first pass. <laughs> and they get because he comes in, he goes, "Okay, let's. I'm ready to do it." And they go. No, you're done. <laughs> and for those guys, that's a big compliment. That's unheard of. Yeah, I mean, that yeah. was his his run through. That's insane. And this isn't like just some song, songwriter song. This is the, very with involved. a drum solo, with like that over, drum over a vamp solo. at the end. I mean, so the story is even funnier, right? So, so then I guess months later, they're like doing overdubs at another studio, and Steve uh, uh, Steve Gad's down the hall playing with Michael Frank, and they're mixing the song <sighs> Asia. And they, he, they invite him to come in. And he comes in after his session. He sits there. Wow, this is grooving. Who's that on drums? <laughs> <laughs> no. and, they're like, and they're like, that's you. And he's like, wow, I'm a badass. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> Sweet. I just he love it. I, 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 like, I really like musicians like that. And yeah. that, that reminds me of your friend Jeff. Who, yeah. Like, he's like... He, he's just I saw a it. podcast recently with Steve Gadd and my buddy from Bill, back from the day in, in Boston, uh, John DeChristopher, who used to work for Zildjian. He's got a great podcast. And it was like two hours of him and Steve Gadd just talking. And Steve Gadd, they're old friends. So, and it's just funny. Steve Gadd is just constantly like doing this deadpan thing like you don't know whether he's serious and then he laughs and so i'm sure that day he knew he knew he played drums on it on that take and a lot of engineers do this you have a couple different stereo uh, speakers here and you have a really good monitoring system so it's yep. all um, can you explain a little bit of the process and I mean why you do it and just what are you listening for and all, like in this clip too what oh uh, okay doing. so um, it's uh, basically just two two sets is in I mean we have three sets here but really two is enough uh, one is more like a full range one mm-hmm. and then the other one is like a small speakers and then in that case that's like a really really old I think that was uh, Bose computer speaker from the 90s <laughs> um, and uh, it costs exactly $99 <laughs> um, I don't think they st- I don't think any oh I know someone famous who still use that but it, it, there's a stereo set of speakers no that both speakers the small one it's stereo. but yeah, yeah it's it's stereo speakers but the uh, the, the, yeah the, the the purpose is uh because um you kind of want to hear uh the overall when it's on like a smaller speaker and both i mean they they have uh they they make uh, st- uh they make product that uh that boosts low ends mm-hmm. So uh, in that case, it's okay because uh, I, if you if you look at the thing, I actually taped up the hole so that the <laughs> bass is not that boosted. Um, but uh, it's to me, it's important because um, to 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 hear the songs coming through, uh, you know, like a three three inch two inch speakers. Mm-hmm. Um, it's important because those things. Um, uh, when when you adjust, especially low frequencies, 
uh, when you adjust stuff in the in the low frequency, you make it sound presentable, yeah. not great. I mean, sometimes if you can make it sound great on the small one, but you, I tend to not to spend too much time on it because a lot of times, you, if you if you actually work on it and make it sound really great on the small speaker, maybe it's not so great in in the car or in other fuller range speakers. But and the purpose is that it's actually to make to to make it translate pretty well, like you know, sounds good. Cause and you, I, I um, think you do a good job of because. Um, like you said, for some things disappear in those speakers. So yeah, you're making yeah, it you so want it to. Yeah, you want your song to still, especially if it's like a, a translates in, a great word. Yeah, Im, important part of the music yes. that you need so to. Especially feel. with making a bass speak, a lot yes, of times you do a, right. like a, another version of the bass with like say like a a filter like a 250. Yeah, uh, like like a limited, uh, a limited limited bandwidth, uh, which you can compress or you you can over compress until it distort yeah or you it in or little. you can use a saturator sure. um and that just makes it on smaller speakers hear those yeah, melodic lines yeah better. because because what happens is the more it distorted the higher order of harmonic yeah, starts yeah. to show up that's what you hear on the smaller speaker not yes. the bass you know yes yes no because i i have that problem all the time when i do something for like my, my movies where it's going to be on a big speaker right. and then you hear it on and, and that bass is just it's gone and right. like exactly what you said like doing what you said would mirror that for that little right. thing and yeah. it wouldn't, wouldn't add it in the other right one yeah and it. you just mix it in and then you, yeah. you know you adjust the range of it yes. so that it doesn't sound weird because no, it's like no no because you know as soon as you add it it, it, it definitely changes the, the the basic tone of that instrument so you want to adjust it until it sounds like oh yeah you know that's acceptable you know yeah. and i think i think i think having worked with you guys it's one of the things that you're just a master of is you have to translate for a lot of different things nowadays and well, half the people listen yeah. on their phone you know? yeah. yeah so like yeah it it needs to sound good yeah Everywhere. not great yeah on iphone it needs to sound good on a full range speaker it needs to sound great yeah, that's a no, great point. Great not point. the opposite. <laughs> one thing, one thing I want to ask. Yes. If, so these these the the speakers you're checking on, they're not so important to you, like the this the type of Bose speaker you're using. Oh, it's important because now I'm so used to it. That's so, what I was uh, gonna ask. If these yeah. broke, would you want to get the same ones? I'll try like to. Your look, I'll try to look for a same one, but um, it's not the end of the world. Right. You know, okay. I can find <laughs> another. Like I heard uh, the company I came multimedia. They make the iLoud speakers, mm -hmm. which is like the small speakers. Yeah, yeah, supposedly, yeah. Supposedly that's great. So that might be the next one if this one breaks. Cool. You know. That's cool. That's really yeah. cool. That's yeah. And because working with you all the time, you hear him changing speakers not constantly but you monitor a lot on both of them you towards, yeah. towards the end of a mix i hear him going to the small ones more and more a lot of times yeah because yeah, that I, you know i need to make small adjustment like you know um a lot of times it's the lower frequency stuff like bass sure mm -hmm. you know like so, uh sometimes you get the mix pretty much together and then you go to the small speaker just to check if like certain notes disappear right. and I if it disappear if it's is it okay that it disappear in the small but or does it change the whole thing? If it does change the whole thing, then I need to change something. Logic, great. And then another complete, uh, you know, sound design kind of thing, and they all weave in and out of each other. It's one minute long, and it's, it's pretty You're much going to mix about itself. The intro, which and then don't once go we, this you know, there could be some little. You might you might hear some panning, things like we, you know, could automate some panning yeah, yeah. because it's, it's but it's and basically I left just enough of a gap so that you can do a version that just starts with nothing or oh, one bar before that. the song. Right. Uh, just a very short little thing, so we can have two versions. And then uh, I'm working on the. Uh, Mellotron stuff with the bridge orchestration and the outro. Great. So, uh, uh, yeah, still, we'll be in good shape. Let's see. I still need to uh, tune some more vocals. That's right. Yeah. Some of the backgrounds, yeah. And don't have to go crazy, but just, you nah. know, pull them in. Cool. Like the stones. So you're tuning, you've gone this far in the process and you haven't like tune like the background vocals does that ever mess with you hearing the rest i mean you can always turn them off no but. yeah yeah usually it's just it okay so the tuning would have been done like really early on if they mm. were horrible 
Oh, okay. Yeah, but in that case, it's not because it's like okay, it's it's a good representation, and whenever yeah. whenever I need to listen to, it, I can push it up and then not really pay attention to the detail okay. of it, and then shut it. Yeah. Uh, when I don't need it. You yeah. Know? So yeah, if it was really bad, we'd have to fix it just so we could listen. Yeah, to it. exactly. Yeah. So that we know that there's there's uh, there's a part that exists, you know, right. that we need to pay attention to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that me? Yeah. Is that me? I was singing. Or yeah. Fucking <laughs> why? It's just like ah. <laughs> Well, I'm playing tambourine. <laughs> I don't even realize I do stuff like that. Yeah, that's <laughs> that is that is quintessential. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, why? Did I eat? What did I have? But if you go back and listen to it, it's like, ah, oh, like you're just like screaming. <laughs> How often does that happen, Cariati? <laughs> All the time. <laughs> <laughs> so you spend more time editing out his moans. Well, no, than... not really editing out. I mean, <laughs> most of the time you don't hear it in the track anyway. That's funny. But it's just funny. Yeah. Especially when you just do, you know, like when you just solo, solo the it. the drums and the thing, and then all of a sudden it's like what? In the background. <laughs> and I have to be so careful with the tracks I give you that I make sure any of our banter or talk I'm gonna want in the track. Because all yeah. those things you guys end up <laughs> using somewhere and somehow, and like yeah. people think it's great. So I mean, all that stuff is always great. So. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock. I'm gonna rock. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock. I think how you kind of go on this uh, Jagger kind of approach to it, like... Yeah, no, no perfection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. Because yeah. it is charming. Yeah, I agree. And it's kind of... It's like unheard of, so it makes it actually stand out. <laughs> yeah. There's one particular line. It doesn't last, it just slips you back. So if you go back to the beginning of that, you can hear Cariati like our discussion before in the last podcast about yep. auto tune, there's some really good examples of that, of you subtly tuning. Like if you listen to it and I think it's exactly what you said. It's, it's not thinking of it. I don't know what you said last time, but you just made it very human. What you change. It's just very subtle, yep. but it's just like pulling down a note or like just the way he approached it. You didn't try to make it like, perfect. Mm. Yeah. Or, or like try and change it. You just, yeah. you know, kind of, that's polished. the art. Yeah. For, for this yeah it's like you know like going for uh, well it's essentially polishing it but not like make it like weird shiny yeah you're kind not of buffing thing. out anything yeah, you're yeah, just yeah, polishing yeah, yeah, yeah. it yeah no and if you're interested in go back and listen to that clip and like that's what you do for like the whole yeah. song and it's right. like he listens to every line and yeah. determines what mm -hmm. you know like what's gold right. about it and what right. needs to be yeah a lot of times it's just like um you know i mean i try to have like a sensitive um ears uh when focusing on vocal but um that's why you hear like the same maybe like three notes uh repeating over and over like every time it repeats i just want to like s i think so i think of something but then like the second time i hit it do i think the same way third time mm -hmm. hit it do i think the same way if it's still the same way then what's wrong with it that's a really good yeah. i know i i have that because yeah. it's like i know when i listen to your mixes i kind of have the three time approach like sometimes when i give you comments right away it's like oh i listened to it three times and that's my favorite thing you know so right. I, I get i get what you're saying in the audition right. to audition right of it, yeah 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 because sometimes you hear something once and it's like it's either terrible or it's great, you know, and like right. you need a second yeah, time yeah, to yeah. listen to yeah. it and realize that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then like I, th uh, yeah, I don't remember exactly what happened on that first. No, no, but the it, first they were one, very but, yeah. subtle. Like, yeah, yeah. If you listen, it's just like, um, yeah. And then, but but I have like, you know, if I ever posted the whole thing, I mean, you probably do that for six hours of this song, you know. Yeah, you something know? like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And then it's a different approach with uh, with doubling, you know, like the how to how to um, edit the doubles. Um, you don't want to make them the same. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to make them the same, and then you want to listen. Uh, you want to listen to it. Well, if they are uh, pan spread out, um, 
whether narrow or wide, um, you want to actually audition them in mono uh, in the whole phrase, uh, and then you kind of slide it slightly to the left or to the right if it becomes thin, because that's when that's when the vocal yeah. matches almost exactly. That's yeah. when it becomes thin, yeah. and then oh, what course. you want to do is you just take it and you slide it. I don't know, like three milliseconds, six milliseconds, twelve milliseconds to the left or to the right until it sounds consistent within the phrase. Um, isn't that isn't that almost like a nat? You're kind of making chorus or it's, something. It's basically yeah. it's phase yeah, related cool. because yeah. when things are yeah. too dead on, they're going to cancel. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so basically, you just shifting you just shifting the the wave so they don't ride on the to. Uh, to, uh, they don't write on the the exact <coughs> opposite. That's when it cancels. Mm. You want to make really it cool. right. Uh, you know, like kind of like this one goes on top, and then the when this one goes down, the other one goes on top. It's like the Oof. perfection of imperfection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. yeah, yeah, yeah. But that you know, like a lot of times, uh, you can actually achieve that naturally um, d uh, when the singer actually sing to the lead vocal. You okay, can achieve sure, because sure. when you yeah. I don't know if you notice when you sing to yourself, it feels right when you can like uh, feel you can feel your new voice and the voice that you're doubling like kind of get thick like around your chest. Yeah. And then you can do that naturally. And that's like the best way to do it. So there's no artificial thing going on. But, you know, yeah, that's really great. So when you are doing it artificially, do you like? Well, not I mean, I'm not saying artificial like right now something that does, it's it's there. All, all that was done was just shifting it to the left or to the right. Sometimes you need to go left. Sometimes you need to go right. Uh -huh. yeah, right. De depending on you know the wave, like how it rides. Like you were talking about before, I mean. Oh yeah, the and then the tuning, the tuning, they don't need to be like perfect, perfect. And then of course you still need to listen to the music because sometimes the music is just overall not individual bass or guitar, but overall sometimes it's like I don't know, like three, four cents. Yeah, sometimes it's a uh, sharp or flat. So you kind of have to listen uh, when you're tuning the vocal. Same thing, like yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think that's another point that there are you guys in working in the studio over time. It's like, what is pitch when you have all these instruments that you do try to tune the yeah. best you can, but right. sometimes being a little bit out of tune or we're like that's where the magic sure. is coming yeah. from, and you. But but then it's a very fine band of then stuff. Yeah, and then it, it and then it's like yeah. and then when when it crossed, then it's that's when the you, ugly you know, shows up. But if yeah. you listen to like some of the biggest records of all time from the '60s and stuff, like the guitars are out of tune and yeah, things. Right. And, and but but people's taste has uh, evolved, and I think with you know 20 plus years of fairly perfect music being almost you know everywhere, you know it, the tolerances have gotten different. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, the, and the, sometimes something being a little sharp expresses something. You know, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's that Beach Boys song, uh, "I Just Wasn't Made for These Times," and that ther of course, theremin is very easy to be, you know, sharp yeah. or something. But that theremin solo, it's just boom, dun, dun, dun. it just is a little sharp, and then it comes back, and it's I don't know what it does, I don't know what emotion that is, but it tugs at me, but it's pulling on something.
So there are some more auto tune examples, and I think it kind of goes back to last thing. That was kind of the thing you ended with about the unison and the other. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, anything you want to add specifically about what you just heard? You um, know, to add to to add to all that great information of the last. Uh, me, if anything, uh, you know how that was listened uh, to soloed. Um, I don't remember exactly why it was in solo, but you always need to check back with the music full on. Because I did notice when solo, there's one part of it, I think the low one at the very end phrase, it, I remember this moment, at the very end phrase, it sounded uh, flat okay. uh, to the rest of the, the backup vocals. Uh, and then when the music is back, it sounds correct. Oh, yeah, uh, and, and so it ended up being flat like technically flat but correct in the music and and for my sake of like editing the stuff there's so much you go through and like i don't even know where i drop stuff to make examples so like of course you listen to it with the music in here it's just like i just oh, yeah, these yeah. are all little yeah, needle yeah, yeah. drops people yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah sometimes uh it goes into solo for certain things like if i say oh maybe uh, one one of the vocal tone is a little too thick i uh, try to isolate which one that can be cut thinner uh, then you solo it and it's easier to hear like you take a little bit and then if you take a little bit and it sounds like a lot That's the one that you're dealing with and this brings up another yeah. question on this um, because this had like I know you have what are some of your approaches when you're uni using a unison you do you usually do like one lead then match it to it for a track like this like I'm saying for this track like with the backups was like when you're saying thinner thicker like how did you approach it in that uh, example it's it's not necessarily the unison it's, it's more it, counterpoint. It, yeah it can be the unison can be the harmony uh -huh. but it was more like specifically like uh, it gets thick um, at a you know like certain frequency maybe a lot of times it's like between 200 and 300 ish like close to 400 mm -hmm. Those are actually a, 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 an area where it can muddy up your uh, mix pretty quickly. Uh, so, you know, if you can take it out, take it out. But if it's like a fundamental uh, frequency of the note, then you cannot take it out. It's there. And you just have to compensate with other uh, instrument or other vocal. Oh. That's crazy. That's really in depth. That's yeah. That's yeah. amazing. That's um, really cool stuff. Yeah, yeah. But that's uh, uh, as far as like the thickness that I was talking about. No, no, no. Yeah, ex exactly. And thing, like yeah. the vocals really amazingly blend. So yeah, you, know, you have that. Thing it's a beautiful of, arrangement. The vocals. Yeah, it's really yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Well, it always start from there. <laughs> the part needs to be good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then and, we can blow it up. <laughs> and, and I think for most of the stuff you hear the things. It's like I'm just like do it, Bronson. Just do it. Like I hear another harmony and like I. Like some of the <laughs> tracks you sang again, but these I think they were all just like you know, yes. yeah. you know, like and like that's going forward, working a little bit more with you. We we could spend a little more time, and these are really demos, and you guys have really made them mm -hmm. amazing. So like going forward, I want to work with you in like the way yeah. we used to twenty yeah. years ago, just because some of the things are so fun for us, and we just speed through them. And so like for us to spend a day doing background vocals at yeah, our studio is fun. fun. Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah. And, and using a different mic or a different setup mm -hmm. so it doesn't spend a yeah. bunch of work yeah. there. Or, or, or it puts you in a better position to start mixing, you know. Nine, eight, seven, ten, <laughs> nine, eight, seven, six. I think Anthony was working on the strings in the oh, background. Yeah, there. yeah, on the on the separate <laughs> Nine, system. Eight, seven, ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, ten. always like a really cool part that Bronson had just like you're like I hear this right from even yeah it's cool I love it um and um I was uh 
How, just what, like, for these, like, I call these almost special effects. Um, for these, like, special effects, um, how do you just kind of fit them in the mix, like, for something like that? Because you want it to be in the background, but you want to still be heard, you know? Right. Yeah, it was It was just a matter of um, getting it in there, and then uh, once you, you're able to hear it, it uh, and then just to make sure it's not too thick or, like, too thin, and you want to know that it's a countdown. Um, yeah. and that, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not nothing special. Yeah. And um, that, I think you might've done like, and then when I, when we're listening, it, it was the same thing again, listening to the consistency. So like the low end doesn't go like, you know, one, one number is mm -hmm. like, it's like heavy. And then mm -hmm. the other number is like lighter. How, oh, how you do know. you get the consistency? Are you well, li just by listening and most of them are already consistent, but sometimes again, like it, it can cancel when it cancels, you just slide it a, a, slight, okay. a slight bit and then, and then you're good to go. And I, then yeah. once, once you know that that's taken care of then it get gets rid of uh, like problem variables you know okay. like when you're actually in the mix when you're trying to push that into the mix yeah you don't have to worry about that anymore, shit anymore yeah. because that's like already out of the equation yeah now it's just really level you know because sometimes you miss that sometimes you get the level up but then you you didn't realize that one of them is actually causing it to like push the base to like plus 4 db you know Wow, and sometimes you don't notice it until you bring it out. You bring it outside wow. uh, to a, like a different system, and then uh -huh. you hear it's like, "Oh, what the fuck happened here?" And then a lot of times you're noticed to go back and take some of the bass out of there. Yeah, when, and yeah, you know. a lot of times you don't really need to taste. I mean, on that one, I I believe yeah, like anything below like a hundred fifty was sure, take yeah, was sure. taken out. Yeah, yeah, but. That's really you know. great about the, the <laughs> yeah. that f this phase. Especially, track, well, yeah. especially when it's left and right. If it's like if everything is panned to the middle, you will hear it that way. Okay. But yeah. when it's stereo, you don't hear it. It's hard to hear it unless you solo it or you put it in mono. Uh huh. Yeah. You know. I'm gonna it's like the Eagles, huh? Yeah. Until I get home. Another sun shining down on a stone. Those are great harmonies. Too. I'm gonna ride until I get home. I'm steering clear of black holes and supernovas. I'm almost there to your Constellation. Yeah, um, I think the reason I played that karaoke is a very small. Did you have to do the same thing to Bronson's voice that you had it in Street Caviar? Did you have? To yes, but this was like the early uh, iteration of it. Like I, I think I mentioned it on the last yeah, uh, when yeah. we when we discussed it. By the mm -hmm. time we get to Street Caviar, uh, Caviar, I already know exactly what to do. Yeah, so okay. Street Caviar was later. That than was the, like yeah. that was like the more optimum way. This was like in the middle. Okay, uh, okay uh, yeah. kind of. Yeah. So yeah, I just wanted to bring that yeah. back up for people <laughs> yeah. who listened. Yeah, Cariati. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right. Because sometimes it takes it ta it takes a while to to. Re really really know what's you know what's good for it yeah. uh, but at the, at the same time though they each have their own like uh, uniqueness um you sure. know in the track sure like, and i know even though we use the same mic we weren't in the same part of the room we weren't yeah. blah 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 so right. it's like different yeah, yeah, day, yeah. different right you know, all right that stuff we don't have a vocal booth or something right yeah, yeah. right is there any way we can get away with no acoustic in the bridge if i do enough orchestration can we get away? uh yeah why not yeah, because it's just fighting everything, you know, the rhythm of it. Okay. It needs a break from the rhythm anyway. Cool. So I'm thinking in the bridge we should just lose the acoustic, kind of make that a different feel. Sounds this, good. Because um, I think it'll be nice if it just kind of goes away and then there's more of a straight rhythm there. Right. And with the with the dry strings and, and I'll put like a berry or a, through a filter or something cool. You know? The tambourine is still swingy, but I think that's, that's, okay. I think that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. To, I think it'd be nice if the... Uh, the guitar wasn't. Uh, I'd be just give it a break. And I've got these kind of sounds. I'm the bridge is beginning to change. I got a couple of counter lines I'm working on too, but that, that's the, the, the foundation. So that should be good. I love the Selena. 
such a, a 70s. You just tuck it behind the dry ones. Is that a yeah. Is that a synth? Yeah. It's a wooden thing. <laughs> it's a synth. It's a wooden it it's a wooden one. string synthesizer. Anything that's made out of wood is good. <laughs> It sounds so real though. Yeah. I really. That one is so big. It's going to be crazy going from that bridge with that crazy orchestration to that dry Alma Brothers thing. It's going yeah, right. to be really a shocking change. <laughs> yeah, nice. I dig it so much. Nice. So, this is the beginning of the new bridge. And um, in giving you this song, like, I always felt like it, like sometimes with the songs like Anthony and Cariati kind of recreate parts of it. And I always felt that like, I love Bronson's vocals, but I always felt our feel was kind of very, you know, it wasn't bad. It just was very typical. Okay. And I, you kind of picked up on that. Yeah. It's weird. And you'll see. And like, this is the beginning. Um, but you do a lot of orchestration on this. So why don't, in this, because we're going uh, what what are we hearing in this clip? Like what what sounds and how did you do well, it? It sounds to me like stuff. it started off with um, there's tuba, and mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, Arturia makes this incredible um, version of the Selena, which was an ARP string machine from the I'm gonna say early 70s. It's this big wood thing. Actually, they have one up in Nashville. We used to use the Bob Marsh uh, had one. But anyway, it's it's just this really. It's analog, so it's got this really great sound. So a mixture of analog strings and real strings. The real strings are from a library called Sunset Sound. They're all recorded at Sunset Studios. Um, it's a great library. Uh, I use it a lot. So they started with a, a couple of a couple of uh, cellos and a couple of violins, and so you can hear that's just kind of like the the beginning of the idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it, and as as, as it progresses, you'll yeah. you'll see. But really, really amazing sounds. Like just like hard to tell it. We did not have an orchestra. You know, it does like, sound like real people. Yeah. It's, it, a lot of that has to do with not quantizing it too. That's mm -hmm. oh, oh, you know, you'll you'll you'll, you'll see coming yeah. up. But yeah. but I'm just saying, besides all that, the sounds are and the way you guys make them. It just sounds like we had a full orchestra there. Oh, that's cool. That's exciting. <laughs> Tiny bit off, but I think it might work. That's cool. See what happens. We got, you know, we can got more than enough to mess with. That sounds cool, doesn't it? It does. Tambourine. Nice. They always sound real, those. Nice. That with the, uh, I should put one flavor of Mellotron in there, though. Maybe a choir. <laughs> Excess is Can best. Can mess with a choir? Oh. Uh, quarter hey, notes. That would be good. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the Radiohead one, though, more of a moody blues kind. I'll just try it. We can always strip it down. You can always make it more. Would, would you rather do the strings first, or...? Um, it don't matter. Okay. I guess we just start with whatever you have there. Yeah, I'd like to get, like, <clears throat> most of the things in here before yeah. I go uh, bust everything out to uh, the box there. Okay, I see what you're saying. So um, what you heard there at the end, like Anthony working on these brilliant strings, which keeps going on um, in their workflow, um, they you guys do summing. And at some point in the mix, you need to change what you do. You don't need necessarily to explain that, but can you ex explain the summing process in, in, in like kind of layman's terms? You okay. don't have to go so through. the summing process, uh, it's basically um, we're, do, we're doing an analog summing. So basically from, uh, well, we use Pro Tools. So from Pro Tools, uh, we would have uh, multiple stereo buses out. And in this example, it's eight stereo, 16 channels out to an outboard um, summing box. Uh, in this case, we use Dangerous 2 bus. And what it does is it does, you know, analog su uh, summing. It's 
sounds great. I love it. Some people say it doesn't make a difference, but I think I can hear the difference, <laughs> and I like it, and then I use it because we have it. Uh, <laughs> you don't uh, have to just do yeah. that. <laughs> but, it's great no, 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 but, but you know, there's there's a whole big argument. It's, it's like you know, like uh, uh, the the internal bussing in Pro Tools is is great. It is great, yeah. but it, it's just a different flavor, and sure. it's it's subtle, but it's not at the same time. So it's it's subtle in a certain way, but it's not subtle in you know it's it's hard to describe it. It has to do with like harmonics and depth, sure. mm-hmm. uh, not necessarily white because you can make shit white anyway. Well, well um, and I also too think if if you if you if you want to get into an argument with karaoke, just listen to their mixes and like I think <laughs> no. the proofs in that yeah. and like so that mm-hmm. part of it. I'm just I'm just explaining like. Cause yeah, because in your process, this is how you do it, and like this yeah. part's a little foreign it's, to me. It's like, it's like yeah, yeah. It's like um, um, you know, a lot of times when we're working on the track, I kind of like st- start to get the balance, but mm-hmm. not necessarily you know like do the external uh, summing right away, uh, because the external summing ac- uh, causes delay, and I try to avoid that when we're still like trying try- trying to like you know develop the track. Because sure. it's it's just like it's not pleasant when you have or to go back and forth. Also, if I'm gonna lay down something quick over there or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. like like if if Anthony needs to use this rig uh, to like overdub uh, something, then it's it's like almost impossible because we're talking we're talking about um, at least like three thousand samples, which is like you know like a lot of songs. That's almost sixteen note. Of, oh yeah, of yeah, delay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's you know, and then once we have enough stuff, and it's like okay, this is ready to mix. That's that's when I do that, and then you know, the process is like I mean, I have a whole routing system okay. that I have, but we can go into it if we need to. No, I think I think yeah. at some point maybe we'll do like a more intense yeah. podcast or talking right. about that. But right. it's just it's just talk. It, it is a step in your process where you like like you know you start here. You, you get 30 percent you get 50 percent and Correct. this is this is kind of a road yeah. mark where you're like yeah, yeah, yeah. you, know, it's you like, can't yeah. do it till you feel comfortable that you have enough you know like right things ready. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah it's it's just for efficiency's sake because oh, like you could you could do it from the get-go but it's just like oh, for our I'm, setup it's not efficient doing and that i'm way. quite sure yeah. you have to go back with the way but but in general it's like a road mark and like you're getting a certain point in the mix now you know right like that, that, yeah that, that part yeah too. yeah yeah and that part i think is much of what's going on is how anthony's working you know right now and it's like it's not you're not ready to get there yet you know but you're just right. waiting for right. this like right. one part which you'll see um it's good you did because you guys work on this and it becomes great for a while <laughs> cool <laughs> are you are you sending every track through the uh, bus, or are you doing group, like a drum group? Okay. group so uh in this instance it's actually eight uh eight group uh, eight okay. stereo groups, so. and then you further mix those after they come no, back. No, so in. basically you do say drums, right? So the the individual drum tracks would be in in, in the box, right? Yeah, that's and then the and then they'll come out as a stereo analog output the whole bus. into the bo- into yeah. into that box mm-hmm. that and then that occupies the f- two uh, you know two channels. Yeah, and then you have the bass. Uh, well, most of the time bass is mono, but sometimes so. But I have actually two channels uh, for bass. Okay. So it could be mono, it could be stereo, and then two channels for guitars. Okay. Two channels for keys. Uh, two uh, two channels for uh, uh, extra guitar because sometimes we have many guitars, so they kind of need to be on a separate a separate stereo okay yeah. uh, mixes, and then another channel for uh, strings or brass or whatever. Okay. That's and then cool. the vocal is separate. The vocal is not from uh, the vocal actually is internal, but it's after, it's after the uh, analog summing. I don't know if that makes sense. Expl- but, a little more. Um, Could you explain that a little more? Okay, so so the way it goes is like uh, uh, multiple buses mm-hmm. out, uh, out to uh, uh, analog box. Right. And then the analog box will sum it, mm-hmm. and then when it sums, uh, it goes. It comes back to Pro Tools. Yeah. And then when it comes back to Pro Tools, that's like my main music mm-hmm. in there. But then since now I have that separate route, I can route all the vocal uh, internally, but bypass all those analog summing. Oh. So I have a separate vocal line uh, on top of the stereo um music mix so like whatever i can i can squash the shit off the uh, uh, uh of the music mm-hmm. 
and the vocal will still it's ride fine. free. Yeah. yeah, that is. Yeah, that's, that's super really cool. Smart. Yeah, that is. That is so yeah, the vocal doesn't great. get get all mad. Yeah. Uh huh. Or I can do stuff yep. like, you know. Yeah, the, the 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 opposite. Yeah, exactly. Or I I can I can use the vocal, to uh, side chain, the music, if I need to. Oh, very you know? very 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 cool. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Awesome. That, that was a great explanation. Thank cool. you. Thank you for listening to the Story of a Song podcast. We'll pick it up there next episode. Architect. 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 Architect.